Sometimes certain actors are known for certain roles. For example, Hugh Jackman is known as Wolverine, but he also plays the uh, decline of fatherhood in the movie Prisoners. You've got Tim Allen, who is known for playing Tim the Toolman Taylor, and he play, pretty much plays that uh, in, uh, what was that? I forgot that motorcycle movie. But then again, there's a certain Harry Sen Ford, who is best known for, of course, playing Han Solo, and also got his break in American Graffiti of all movies, but which, coincidentally, were, were both directed by uh, George Lucas. But, how is he in Air Force One? This is a 1997 action political movie, which is directed by Wolfgang Pete, where is it? Wolfgang Peterson, starring Harrison Ford and Gary Oldman, Wendy Crusid, Paul Guilfoyle, and a whole bunch of other people, with music by Jerry Goldsmith. Tagline, the fate of the nation rests on the courage of one man. Harrison Ford, Gary Oldman, and Glenn Close, forgot about her, my apologies, star in Wolfgang Peterson's Das Boot Troy in the Line of Fire, gripping thriller about a steadfast U.S. president who just told the world he would not negotiate with terrorists. Now, Russian neo-nationalists have hijacked Air Force One, and the president is faced with a nearly impossible decision. Given the terrorist demands or sacrifice not only the country's dignity, but the lives of his wife and daughter. Ah. And, just to give you an idea, at, uh, before we get to the read before that, um, Wolfgang could not get permission to um, acquire like an Air Force One jet. One phone call from they were sent for change that. That's funny. And also, G Gary was known as Scary Gary because he was so intense during his performance that um, they kind of took him back. Once the cameras rolled off, they were both amiable. So you could tell they love shooting this. So it's known as Air Force Fun. So, how does this stack up? Is this a rah rah, a, ser a serious movie? Yes, this is indeed a serious movie movie but at the same time you look at all the conventions you look at all the cliches of there's a mall who manages to somehow get all the weapons on board there is a there is a neo-nationalist group that managed to overtake everything have hostages and have their own type of and have their own um agenda i guess you will you have got you've got the wife and children involved who are who act as bargaining chips slash give comfort to the protagonist. Yes, it's all there. But here's the difference. Air Force One does this with class. It treats the viewers. It does not insult the uh, film watcher's intelligence. Instead, it is a straight to the point ride. Harrison Ford, of course. Playing the, he is now playing the pres, playing a fictional president, or he is still kind of Han Solo or from uh, American Graffiti, but here he's toned down, being the um, cocky person, actually trying to save the dang country from a vicious, volatile general from being released. And there are so many great action scenes. I'll tell you, where he's down, where he's down trying to take out some bad guys, where he manages to. Contact some people to say, yeah, I'm going to release some fuel. That way people will still know I'm alive. Um, send a fax machine to uh, to alert uh, the White House that, hey, yeah, I'm safe. Uh, yeah, which is also where Glenn Close is. I was very surprised to see her there. <laughs> and um, color me surprised when she actually gives a good solid performance of not. Because the script called for her to be like a little bit to... Be a little bit more emotional, and she refused to say, "I don't want. I don't want women be seen like that. I want to be strong and independent." Although she does cry when a certain when a hostage is executed, which I guess that is a fair trade-off. But she gives such a stern, powerful performance of not giving in, not not willing to negotiate with terrorists. And um, during the during the conversations with like the general and everyone advising what's going on, it's like the camera circles around three people. Uh, done in with like uh like nope no takes not like what's what I'm looking for no nope, no cuts no edits okay maybe ones we didn't see but you could tell it's like this is going on this is the debriefing scene 
He's powerful. You look at him like, yes, they are trying to get this plane that's 30,000 feet in the air, trying to refuel and things like that. But to me, the most amazing performance was, of course, Gary Oldman, Darkest Hour, Serious Black, what have you. I was very impressed. He is, he's got a goat, he's got a commanding goatee, he's got a firearm, he's got a crew, he's got blunt, blind faith, and some intensive scenes where he shows that he is a true monster, including about 50 minutes in where he takes the uh, wife and daughter downstairs and talks to them. It's like, you saw... You saw your uh, first. You saw a first person get um, Thanos, didn't you? YouTube, of course. I can't say that certain word. It rhymes with Bill. You saw this person get Bill, right? And wife says, "You are a monster, aren't you?" It's like, and then he says, "You know, I have three small children, and I don't want them to know the horrors." It's like, you commit two hundred thousand. Like you kill three hundred thousand people just to say just to knock off five cents off of oil prices that alone 50 minutes in very powerful performance uh yeah he, he is a he is a bastard i mean he actually does get a little bit of a body count and says i will i will bill um some people every half hour and actually manages to keep that promise of screaming soft voice and of and of course just volatile volatile him gets the he gets his just desserts I have to say that <laughs> sometimes it does get like it the climax does get a little what's the word I'm looking for kind of sci-fi ish I have to kind of agree it goes from be realistic but then it does go over the top not so over the top that it um jumps the shark but there is certain points where it does kind of feel artificial yes including a including one little jet that manages to sacrifice itself to for the president but other than but and also this over the top way of how they get everyone off the plane Yes, I will have to admit, that seemed far-fetched. Maybe it could be done. I don't know. I'm not going to bother because it made oh, $248 million at the box office, if I'm not mistaken. Right around there, 1997. Um, and you could, and I also noticed that there were some, it was either green screen or CGI that was still happening. It, some of the effects are kind of out, are kind of dated, but you can forgive it for everything else that's going on. And forgive it for the great acting. The music is supposed to be Randy Newman number, but apparently it's, it's considered to be too serious, so they got someone else. It's patriotic. It's got, you know, the oboes. It's got the brass section just for to capture the intensity. One good thing I also liked. Not not too many. Not too many stupid um, jump cuts. Not too many ads. It's like, yeah, there's going to be stunt doubles, but it's done. It's like... I could actually tell, like, they spent like maybe 30 minutes for a take. I like that. I like seeing that. So, what is my verdict on Air Force One? If you have a lousy day and you want to be entertained by, uh, by what is what is this? Kind of like con, like a Con Air type movie, except better. You want a good, a fantastic performance from Gary Oldman. You want to see Heron. Harrison Ford and Glenn Close all on stage and being amazing. You want to see it? Oh, you want to see some great, some really good action scenes and uh, an amazing finale. Um, you want and you want to be treated. You want your intelligence treated with respect. Uh, but you know that there are going to be some faults. Then I do recommend that you watch Air Force One.